Hello everyone. Today we're going to demonstrate on how to remove a differential module. We're doing this indoors and uh, with the unit outside of the vehicle. It's going to be a little more difficult to do this on the vehicle, but uh, this makes it nice and easy for us to explain it to you. First of all, we're going to demonstrate on how to remove the differential module and to in, um, including uh, removing the temperature sensor and the choke solenoid, or some call it the choke valve. So we'll start by removing the plugs for the pump motor, which is here. It's a two pin connector. And the communications and power connector, which is a much larger connector with far more pins. So we'll remove those first. Be careful with these tabs. Just gently pry up a little bit and they pop right off. This one's already gone. So this is gonna be a piece of cake. Now we're ready to remove the bolts that hold it in place. These bolts have four millimeter Allen key heads. On the vehicle, it's much easier to use an actual Allen key because of the restricted area you have to work with. For the mechanics, I'm sure you've got a special tool that'll fit in there and make it nice and easy for you. But today we're gonna use a, a normal four millimeter Allen key. It's a standard Allen key that we're gonna use to remove this with. Now there's two bolts here. Now it's a good idea when you stop the vehicle, if you've just finished using the vehicle, to minimize oil leakage and let everything settle down. It's a good idea to wait about four to five minutes after you shut off the vehicle before you remove this module to minimize oil leakage. So we'll start by removing the four millimeter Allen key, or Allen bolts. Now some of these do get seized, you have to, it's not gonna be as simple as this, but just uh, take your time, don't strip the bolt heads because then you're into a, a lot of problems. Okay, so both uh, bolts are out. We'll get a rag to soak up any uh, fluid that's leaked. Now be careful removing these things. Just grab it with two hands, pull straight out. Now as you can see, this is the differential module. Um, there's a couple of versions of these. Some of these come with this copper coil and some of them don't have a coil there. Now, just for the sake of ordering something ahead of time, if we happen to have one, this is critical information for us. So when we remove these units or when you remove this unit, just see if it's got a coil or not. It's good information for us. Now there's also a difference in communication speeds. Uh, and from 2004 down, these basically use 250 gigabits of speed on the high speed network. In 2005 and up, they doubled that up and they went to 500 speed. So if you're thinking about, you know, taking a used one off a vehicle, and putting it onto a, your car, it's critical information to find out the speed that that module works on in that vehicle. Uh, we do offer a, an echo transfer, it's called. Basically, it's taking, sending in, getting a used one, sending in your original module, and we can transfer that data into the supplied module. It's critical that you try and get everything to be identical, part numbers, year and model of the vehicle. Okay, enough of that. Now, you can see this is the, the ceiling plate. 
And on that ceiling plate, there's a concave washer. Make sure you remember the orientation of this washer. It's a bowl type washer. This, the concave, the high part of the washer, always faces the unit, going towards the unit. Now, this washer is where the oil and temperature sensors sit. Just simply pry these out. That's your oil and, and pressure sensor. Uh, sorry, oil sensor and temperature sensor. And this is the choke solenoid or the choke valve. So there you go, the unit's removed. As you can see, there's only a little bit of oil leakage there, but try to minimize that. Now, when you reinstall this, we're not gonna put the choke valve in or the oil pressure sensor, oil pressure temperature sensor in. We're gonna install it on the module first just so you don't damage the connectors inside. They're very, very fragile. And if you bend those things and they break, it's a big problem. So we're gonna show you how to install this unit. First, we'll use the ceiling plate. As you can see, it's got a rubber gasket around there. Just inspect it and make sure that the seal hasn't been damaged, hasn't been ripped anywhere. And if it looks pretty good, these can be used a few times before it's deemed unusable. Now we're gonna put this in. Remembering this slot was for the oil pressure and temperature sensor, and this was for the uh, choke solenoid. So we'll just line them up. The concave washer, high side facing up. We'll put that in place. We'll put our temperature sensor and connect it. Just make sure it fits in there nice and firm. And it clips in there nicely. That's the way it looks. Concave facing upward. It's, it's like it's pushing up on the sensor. And the solenoid only goes one way. It's got a two pin connector. Make sure that you line it up properly and it just clips in. Grabbing a hold of the module with the sensors and the choke valve in place, gently align them up, push them in. Don't tighten them up, just do one at a time there. Just snug them up a little bit. The torque on these bolts is only five Newton meters. And the module would be in place. All you would do, put your connectors back in for the pump. Line them up, should hear a click, like that, it's locked in. And for your communication and power and grounds, just plug them in like that. I hope this was informative. Um, I forgot to mention that it's a good idea when you have the sensors out, including the solenoid valve or choke valve, that you inspect the seals on them and make sure they're not damaged because that's the only thing preventing 
the fluid from coming from the Heldex unit inside the module. And you don't want to get oil in there because oil can be a, a conductor, if you know what I mean. It can wipe it out. So now we're going to show you how to replace the pump. As you can see, this thing's got a fairly large flange. And the clearance between the pump and the, and the flange is very, very small. So it's impossible to remove this pump without removing this flange. The flange itself has a 24 millimeter nut on it. Now, you've got to figure out a way to lock this flange in to try and get this nut off. An air gun works really good, but uh, I, I can appreciate not everybody's got a compressor with an air gun that can pull these units out, but uh, there is enough threaded bolts in there, or threaded holes in there that you can contrive a tool to retain this uh, flange and allow you to remove that uh, nut just using regular hand tools. Okay. But I'm gonna use uh, my super strong tool, my hand, and just rip this nut right off. <laughs> now this has already been removed. Chances are it's not gonna be as easy to remove it on the vehicle. You're gonna have to use something to tap it out with. But, all right, just give it some light tap. Slip it out. Now you are gonna lose some oil through here. So be ready for that and have some fluid ready. And we'll just unlock this. There we go. Again, the bolt size on these uh, uh, screws that, basically the screws that hold on the uh, electrical pump is also four millimeter. So we'll take them off. Awfully quiet. Now these have a seal in there, so they are kind of tough to get off. You might need a little screwdriver to help you remove it. Again, make sure you get some fluid. Uh, we do recommend the Volvo fluid. It's very, very unique. And they seem to have the highest quality when it comes to this. And there's your pump. Now, inspect the, uh, the screen on the pump. That's a pretty good indicator that the oil has gotten really dirty. If you see a lot of debris in there, chances are that's going to be from the clutch material inside the AOC unit or the Heldex unit. And if you see a lot of debris in there, what you should be doing at the same time, which I highly recommend, is changing the filter. Now, the filter is very, very close to the pump. Again, it's using the same size uh, screws, uh, also a four a millimeter Allen key head. And that's also gonna, it's the best indicator of what's going on in your AOC unit. So we'll remove this cover. Now it is spring-loaded back there, so the cover is going to naturally pop out on you. So just make sure you hold on to it so you don't drop it. When you're putting a filter kit in there, it also includes a new modified cover. 
It's got some fins on it to help dissipate the heat a little better. There you go. You can see it's got an oil ring around there for sealing. It's spring loaded, so there's a spring in the center of this. Now, sometimes you can just pop these out easily. But if you look at it, I mean, this one's in extremely bad shape. I mean, this thing is black, black, black. And I can tell you right now, if this was my car, I'd be changing the fluid on this thing for sure, because this is really bad. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to put a new filter and get that out of the way. Again, Volvo has a, a filter kit available, and that's exactly who we get them from. Very, very high quality. And uh, we're going to put this in. Here's what a new filter looks like. See the filter material in there? Of course, it's not going to stay that way long, but when it turns black, you know that fluid has got a lot of debris running through it. Use the old lubricant, put a little bit on the oil ring. This will snap into place. Push it in there, pop it in. And this kit includes some brand new screws um, and a brand new cover. There's the fins on it. This helps dissipate the heat. And we'll put a little bit, little tiny bit of oil on there, help it go in there. Make sure your housing is fairly clean, it's not corroded, so you don't damage the seal. Align your bolts. Push it in by hand, make sure it's uh, centered, the seals are centered, and it's not going to destroy it. The seal, that is. Just alternate when you're tightening it. We're going to torque these up afterwards, but it's also five Newton meter as a torque value here. There it is. There's a new filter kit in there. New cover, new bolts. And now we're going to reinstall the pump. The screen faces downwards, because that's basically how it's mounted on the vehicle. Just put it in there, line it up, Torque on these are five Newton meters as well. Plug it in. Click. Put your flange in. Now the torque on this baby here, it's not five Newton meters, I can tell you that. It's about, a, it's 150 Newton meters is the torque spec on this. Now, for your information, 
there is no drain plug on this unit. There is, though, a filler plug. There's actually two of them. Be careful, only one is for the AOC unit, which is this one here. But that's basically, when you have it on the vehicle, undo this, fill it up to the top until some of it starts to come out. Put it back in, take it on a road test, bring it back in, recheck it again. Make sure the oil level is up to par. And that's it, that's the basic function of uh, dem removal, oil pump replacement, and the filter replacement. It's been our experience, and over the years in repairing these differential modules, we ran into a lot of problems where we would repair a module that's been basically destroyed, work diligently at it, send it back to our clients, Almost instantaneously after they installed it, we get a call back stating that their module's not working anymore. We get it back here. We find out some of the internal problems were the control of the power supply to the pump. It's not a 12 volt reference point that's basically direct voltage there and the pump operates. It's a pulse width modulated signal. It's a frequency with a duty cycle. Now these things are constantly going on and off, on and off, on and off. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a good idea, it's recommended that whenever you, you send a differential module to us that you give it straight 12 volts and if it doesn't sound noisy or it's not seized, chances are it's going to be good, especially when it's only drawing one 0.5 amps, that sort of deal, just as an example. But even with cases like that, we've actually had DEMs get destroyed. 90% of our repairs are a result of failing pumps. The other 10% are basically network interference or water intrusion, where it just shorts out the unit. Uh, typically, a blown fuse is a really good example that you've got a bad pump. And uh, what you don't want to do is put a new fuse in there. What is recommended is that you remove the connector, the two-pin connector for the pump, and then put the fuse in. If the fuse blows right away, you know the differential module's at fault. If it doesn't blow, you know the pump was the culprit and you don't want to reconnect that pump because it can destroy that dem for good and you've got no choice but to send it to, up to us to get repaired. Remember, look at it like a, a snowball. At the top of the hill it's a little tiny ball and as it gets going down the hill it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the reason I say that is you've got clutch material in here the clutch material, the debris comes off with time as it wears a little bit, it contaminates the fluid, starts to plug up the filter, starts to overwork the pump, takes out the dim. So when you're doing this, it's highly recommended you do everything at once. New fluid, new filter, new pump. Hope this helps and I hope you enjoyed it.